Good morning, class. It's time for a pop quiz. Do you never have anything to wear despite a closet full of clothes, love looking at fashion, but don't know how to translate your tastes into your own wardrobe? Impulse buy items off of TikTok only to regret it a few months later? Feel like you gravitate towards completely polarizing aesthetics and don't know how to combine them without looking like a trash bag? If you answered yes to any or all of these questions, we've got work to do. Now, what exactly qualifies me to be giving out styling advice? absolutely nothing so you should probably click out of this video if that's what you're looking for but please don't because i worked really hard in this video and i think you'll like it i have always loved fashion and i would spend all my time drawing outfits or upcycling my old clothing and occasionally even sewing my own clothing from scratch didn't turn out very great but i had fun i think but as time went on i never really felt like my taste in fashion ever translated into what I wore on a day-to-day -day basis. And now looking back, I think part of this was because I would buy pieces of clothing individually thinking that if I liked it, I should be wearing it and not really consider if it fit into my wardrobe from a holistic perspective. I was also in the habit of doing a lot of seasonal and back to school hauls, which meant that my wardrobe would look very dated by the next season because all of the main pieces were from a very specific time period. And then I would push all those items to the back of my closet and I would have this void that I need to fill and I would go and do another haul and the cycle would repeat itself. So. How did I fix this problem and how did I eventually find my own authentic personal style? Now the first stage, which I think is the most fun part, is mood boarding and brainstorming your dream style. I use Figma because I'm a designer, but you can use any sort of software that you're comfortable with that lets you add images and move them around freely. And I want you to go and check out Pinterest or Instagram, people you follow whose style you really admire, even people that you know in real life, and see what outfits appeal to you. If there's any items or silhouettes or colors or just the vibe that really stands out to you that just really clicks i want you to take that image and add it to your mood board you can also look back to fashion icons like jane birkin or audrey hepburn anna wintour also look at movies that have really inspired you for example did you really like anne hathaway's outfits in the devil wears prada the obvious answer is yes. Or maybe you watched 500 Days of Summer and you really loved Zoe Deschanel's quirky feminine vibe that she had going. Think about all the different resources in your life that you draw inspiration from. One of my favorite tricks if you are using Pinterest is to actually go into a specific pin that you really like. You're gonna click on that and Pinterest actually has a similar pins feature and they'll show you a bunch of different images that are closely related to the one that you originally picked out. And this allows you to get really deep in figuring out what it is exactly about each outfit that you like. Also make sure that you are taking inspiration from your current wardrobe. Even if you're not happy with how everything looks right now, there's going to be some key pieces that you always gravitate to. Is it a specific sweatshirt or a specific pair of pants? Maybe you love your white sneakers and you've worn them to death. Really look to see what shows up in your day-to-day -day life right now because that's going to give you clues as to what you feel the most comfortable in. You can also look to see what pieces that you might like but you just never really seem to wear because that is going to tell you that certain fits maybe are more uncomfortable for you, you don't really like to go out in them, or maybe you have a beautiful dress that you saw at the store and you bought it on impulse but you've never worn it because you just don't go to enough events that need dresses. So these are all things to consider and put into your mood board during this stage. And then once you feel like you have enough raw images to work with, we can move into the second stage, which is to begin narrowing these down. So take a look at your mood board from a bird's eye view. What patterns are you seeing repeating? What items or cuts or fabrics, colors do you feel like you are really gravitating to and seeing over and over again? 
And don't forget styling. That's also a really important part of this. If you seem like you're really pinning people with 90s blowout hair or just really simple, bold red lips, people who have a lot of rings on or really fun nail colors or love to tuck in their shirts into their pants, these are all details you want to take note of. And I know one concern of a lot of people when they talk about personal style is that they feel like they are drawn to a lot of different aesthetics that don't seem to work together very well. And this is where you're actually gonna take those different categories and find exactly what it is about each one that is pulling you in. For example, I have always loved the punk goth aesthetic since I was a kid. I was a really big fan of punk music. I've also always really loved Japanese culture and the kawaii lolita type of way of dressing. What is it in each of these aesthetics that I am so drawn to? So for example, in the punk aesthetic, I just really love giant chunky black shoes and platforms and I also love metallic hardware. So instead of wearing this entire vibe head to toe, I might say that combat boots are something that I want to be a very big part of my style or a leather studded bag is something that I wanna wear a lot. And for more of a kawaii vibe, I might decide that I want to integrate just little pieces of kid core jewelry, like colorful beading, or maybe I will find a vintage Sanrio shoulder bag that will add to some of my more simple outfits as a statement piece. And before we go any further, I do wanna make a quick note about trends because if you are not careful and considerate about the trend cycle, you're gonna end up with a wardrobe full of trendy clothing that you're not gonna like by the next year. And I know a lot of people will try and tell you not to follow trends and to just follow what is timeless, but I don't really know if I believe that anything is truly timeless. I mean, even if you look at a simple white t-shirt, which people consider classic, there's always gonna be certain cuts and silhouettes and necklines that are trending in and out depending on the year or the decade. So instead of thinking about what is classic and what is trendy, I want you to think more about what is classic to you and your style. So look at your closet and identify the items that you've just had for years, something that you've had for maybe four or five, six years since you were a teenager and you still pull it out every once in a while because it just never gets old. Another good strategy is to look at people who you admire, but look at their outfits from five years ago. So maybe you have always really admired the way that Rihanna dresses herself. Go back to 2015, see what she was wearing then. What are the pieces then that you would still wear today even if they weren't necessarily what is the trendiest item and in addition to trends I think it's also important to understand when you're being influenced versus when you're picking something that you genuinely like and speaks to you Lainey Ozark actually did a really good video on this I will try and link it down below number one understanding that if you do not like something the first time you see it and you eventually like it after repeated exposure you were influenced. So if you didn't like Crocs the first time you saw it and now you are wearing Crocs, that is all. Another tip she has is that if you really do like a trend, maybe try and find something that is a little bit more unique. Maybe you dip your toe into something more vintage or just find an alternative because once that item has been seen a million times, you're way more likely to get sick of it if it's a very specific brand. I think the IMG jacket from, I think it was maybe, 2019, 2018, 2019, everyone and their mom had it. And I still have it, I still love it, but I can't wear it anymore because it just reminds me so specifically of that time period. Whereas I think if I'd had the self-awareness to go out and get a different type of teddy coat, I could wear it today and it wouldn't feel like I was wearing a dated trend. I think the only exception here is items that flow in and out of the trend cycle. So they will be trendier at times, but they never quite get to the point where they become Become outdated they just become a little bit more of a classic some really good examples of this are the Doc Martin the Air Force One the Louis Vuitton Neverfull these are all specific branded items that become trendier depending on the year but they'll never quite go out of style you'll never wear any of these and feel like you're specifically dressing for 2017 or 2012 and one more thing sorry I said this was gonna be a quick note on trends but I just have a lot to say about it. Just remember that if you are someone who is chronically online and is always following fashion influencers or watching trend videos, it is literally somebody's job to be ahead of the trend cycle. So by definition, they cannot be wearing what is mainstream or what regular people are wearing day to day. Something to keep in mind. 
Now, moving on, once you have had your time doing all this mood boarding and this brainstorming and figuring out what you like, we are going to narrow things down. Because just as important as figuring out what you are into, it's also important to set boundaries and decide what your style is not. So first off, we're gonna figure out what will you actually wear versus what do you just appreciate seeing on other people? A good way to do this without spending money is to just go to the mall, go to some different stores, maybe like a Zara that shops a lot of different styles. Try on all the things that you're interested in. If you feel like you wanna start incorporating more blazers or more lime green, go and actually try those things. Look in the dressing room, see if it fits you the way that you imagine or if it's just something that you like seeing on other people. I actually think blazers are a really good example of of this because I loved the tailored oversized blazer like tailored pants aesthetic that you see on the streets of New York but I just look like a child when I try to dress up like that I feel so uncomfortable in a blazer no matter the cut or the style so that's something that I have just come to terms with that I really like seeing on other people but I don't like it on me another thing we want to consider is whether or not you are going to buy something because you actually want to wear it or because you want to take a photo in it I think Instagram has really messed up our concept of fashion because people will wear something just for one post and then they're afraid to repeat it because they can't put it into another picture. So just remember, outfit repeating is totally normal. In fact, it is the goal. So if it's something that you're only gonna wear for one event, and it's not your wedding, then you should put it back on the shelf. Another way to really narrow down your options is to start to write your own fashion rules. A really great way to do this is to start studying different fashion theories. So for example, the Kibbe body system is really popular. It helps you figure out what really emphasizes your body structure and shape and what is not necessarily as flattering on you. You can also get into seasonal color analysis or Kitchener essence. You don't have to wear what's flattering at all you can always just wear what you like but if you feel a little bit lost and you're not really sure how to narrow things down i think these can be a great starting place and now it's time for the fun part we get to build our style profile your style profile is going to be a reference guide for you now and in the future just to know exactly what your style is and serve as a guide for you whenever you are shopping or choosing new clothes to add to your wardrobe. So first off, we are going to name our style and write down exactly what we want this style to say about us as the wearer. Then we are going to list out cuts, silhouettes, fabrics, colors, anything that we saw in the previous exercise when we were looking for patterns in our mood board. You can also list out typical outfits for every season. So what would the style wear in summer or spring versus autumn and winter? And then once you have the basics covered, we're gonna go into listing the actual items that compile this personal style. A lot of people like to categorize just basics and statement pieces, but one thing that is usually missing is key pieces. And this is actually the most important part of building your own wardrobe. Your key pieces really make up the core and the essence of your style. They're what makes you feel like you. Now, when it comes to basics, these are going to be items that you would need if you were to only dress in your key pieces. So for example, if a key piece of mine was a leather jacket and a pair of combat boots and maybe a silk midi skirt, then what would I need to create a full outfit from this? Of course, I need a top, right? So maybe a plain white tank top or a plain white t-shirt would be considered a basic for me. I would also need a purse. And then finally, we have our statement pieces. I think this is the one that people kind of intuitively understand the most already. These are going to be items that are just really fun and you can use when you feel like dressing up more and these can be in like crazy colors or patterns or just depending on what your style is the statement piece is going to be different for each person and color palettes are of course a very important part of building your wardrobe as well you want to divide these into your main colors your neutrals and your accent colors so main colors and neutrals people get a little bit confused sometimes your main color is something that you could dress head to toe in and still feel like yourself. So for example, I could wear all black, I could wear all white, and that is still an outfit that feels like me, but I consider beige and denim to be neutrals. So if I wore a beige t-shirt and a beige pair of shorts, I feel like I would need like a black bag or 
maybe like a white pair of sneakers to really feel like this outfit was representative of my personal style. And once you have all of these pieces written down, it's time to create your outfit formulas. These are gonna be a key part of helping you make sure that you never run out of anything to wear and that all of the items in your wardrobe actually go together to create an outfit. So for example, something I've been drawn to since high school is dresses and boots and cover-ups. So I might write that down as an outfit formula and then I'm going to list different items that could make up each ingredient. And now if I were to go through and create an outfit, I can mix and match these. So I could put the black mini dress with the black cowboy boots and a beige cardigan over top or a white slip dress with black combat boots and a white linen button down. Doing a lifestyle audit on your wardrobe can also be really helpful if you feel like you never really have outfits to wear for certain occasions. So here's an example of how my life is broken down versus what my closet is actually equipped for. Sorry, that was actually just a screenshot of my YouTube analytics showing that 98% of you are not subscribed. Here we go. Yeah, so this is my lifestyle pie chart. You can see that I'm actually pretty equipped for chilling at home. I have like a ton of t-shirts and hoodies and everything. I don't have a lot of daytime outfits in order to go out with like friends or just have like a casual day out. And there's also a couple other areas that I feel like I need to fill in. And now it's time to create your shopping list, which I know I said we weren't going to be spending any money. So just humor me for now. We're going to prioritize our list based off of the key items that you wrote down and you don't currently have in your closet. Any main colors that you seem to be missing, any ingredients of your outfit formulas that you don't have enough of and any parts that are missing from your life pie chart. So when it comes to shopping, a lot of people get overly excited and they go out and buy an entirely new wardrobe because they feel like they discovered this new style and they want to make sure that they can dress in it as soon as possible. Please don't do this. Again, this is how you waste money and you end up with a bunch of clothes that you're not gonna like a year from now. In reality, you actually have most of what you need already. So the first thing I want you to do is to shop your closet. See what pieces you already have, what you can already use to start dressing in this new style, and also take note of items that are almost what you want them to be, but not quite, and maybe just need a little bit of tailoring or some judging up to be exactly what you want it. And if you really feel like you need additional items to fill out your wardrobe right now, some no spend ways you can do that is by hosting a clothing swap and inviting friends, trading clothes. You can also shop your mom's closet, borrow clothes from friends. And one of the strategies I actually really like is selling to buy, which means that you list all of the clothing that you no longer feel attached to and the money you get back from that you can use to buy new clothing. So you're not actually spending money that you didn't have in the first place. Now, if you are willing to go out and spend just a little bit, I would say start at thrift stores. Local Goodwill, always a great option. Not only are you going to find items for cheap and be able to test run your new style without spending a lot, you're also going to find items that are probably more unique and therefore are going to last a lot longer in your closet. And of course, it is more sustainable, which is always great. Another option is to get into a clothing rental service. I'm a very big fan of Newly. Now, if you insist on spending actual money on new items for your new closet, that's totally fine as well. I would just give a couple tips first. Number one, always use a wish list. I have one on Pinterest where where I just pin whatever item that I'm thinking of and I come back and look at it maybe a month later to see if I still like it. This can also be really useful back in your mood boarding and planning stage to see what trends you've liked for a really long time. I have items on there that I pinned four or five years ago and I still want. So I think that's a good sign that it's something that really appeals to my personal authentic sense of style. And another benefit of this is you can always share your wish list with friends and family and maybe you will actually end up getting one of these items as a gift. And make sure you know where to invest if you are going to buy higher quality clothing. You want to focus on your key pieces because again, these are gonna be what you're cycling through the most. And you also want to be spending on functional clothing. So your shoes or winter jackets actually keep you warm. That's probably where you wanna put your money first. Now, of course, style is always evolving. So the final tip I can give you is to take it slow. But once you are ready to go out and buy your new wardrobe, I suggest you take a look at my recent video on cider clothing. They can be a good option for getting inexpensive pieces if you want to experiment and that's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.